last night on The Bachelor. What's most important to me and, and to express to each and every single one of the women is um, no sex. Three days later. Remember our conversation like going into the week. Yeah. Um, we both agreed and wanted to have sex together. Something um, not that chill happened last night. Gagged, gooped, jaw on the floor, they got me, I did not see this one coming. Fantasy Suites Week of The Bachelor is here, and if like me, you thought this was going to be a tame ending and all of those previews were just faking us out... Think again, brother. Now to set the scene for this Fantasy Suite disaster in Thailand, we open this episode with Zach having a sit down with Jesse Palmer to discuss the importance of the week ahead. And it's here where Zach reveals his game plan to avoid all the mess that happened with Clayton season. No sex. No, no, no sex of, of any kind for fantasy suites. Okay. Yeah. So, just like my 7th grade sex ed teacher, Zach says the best way to avoid making a mess of things is to look in the mirror and say... I practice abstinence. You really gonna be able to pull this off? Because It'll you, be tough. you are gonna be tempted. No, absolutely. That's without a doubt. Whatever you want to call it, the animalistic desire or whatever, like, yeah, it's gonna be really damn hard. So to start Zach's week of avoiding that animalistic desire, production throws him to Ariel. And you know this is gonna be good when right out of the gate you have Ariel saying, Being physical with someone is a big part of loving someone, getting to know them. So I can't wait to keep exploring this relationship. Now on this date, Zach and Ariel will be hitting up a nighttime market to partake in some local delicacies. What is that one? Chicken. Chicken. Cricket. Oh, cricket. <laughs> uh, yes, and I hear it pairs well with a nice mold wine. Mold wine, which sounds really gross, right? It's mold, like M-U-L-L-E-D, like, and, well, the food gets spicier, the night gets hotter, but when things hit the dinner portion of their date, Zach pours some cold water over the whole thing by telling her... That this week in particular, um, sex being off the table. At which point, Ariel throws fire back on the whole thing by telling Zach... I feel like if you set a standard before, I feel like I'm definitely not gonna sleep with you. Like, probably will by saying no. So... <laughs> So, time to cue the fantasy suite card and get these two to their room. And boy oh boy are the editors working overtime to up the feeling that temptation is in the air as they play this sexy music. This is gonna be difficult. Good God. Should we jump in our suits? Should we go? Yeah, let's do it. Now that we're all dry, should we make out more? But despite the shots of their clothes all over the floor the morning after, these two managed to make it through the night without breaking Zach's vow. We did That's do like three different positions. Yeah. It was like the side. Sleeping positions. Oh gosh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even think of that. Which means we're now on to the second fantasy suite of the week with Gabby, who's both excited and nervous for her date as lately she's been kind of freaking out about this whole experience. I'm gonna smell terrible. My self-tanner might melt off because it is hot out here. But you know what? He should love me regardless. Good for her. Now on this date, Zach and Gabby will be hitting the water and sailing to a private beach. And here, Gabby really wants to tell Zach she's falling in love with him, but at the same time, she's getting in her own head. In previous relationships, I was like kind of chosen second, and so like not seeing you for so long and then being the second fantasy suite, I was like, oh, I feel very second again. Well, Gabby goes off to have a cry as she's having a bit of a freak out. She then tells Zach this has nothing to do with him, she's just been cheated on in the past, and the feeling of being second is something that really gets to her. All the while, Zach reassures her that the order of fantasy suites and her being the second one is in no way a reflection of his priorities. And so, Gabby feels all better, just in time for them to head to the night portion of their date, and for Zach to say... I think what feels right to me is approaching this entire week not having sex. Well, this comes as a bit of a surprise to Gabby, who responds like, That really bummed me out, man. Jamaican? Yeah, it was a bad choice. First I was like bummed out, but I think it'll be great. 
I can't wait for him to see my skincare routine. So these two head off to their fantasy suite, where I really hope they've got a good selection of board games. Oh. 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 Oh, wow. This is a big bed. Lots of room for activities. Look at all this floor space. So much. Your robots in here. So many activities. Do step class. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. And while Zach has no plans for the night, Gabby, on the other hand, is open to an audible. Zach says he's not having sex, but I don't know. Maybe he will. Well, it's now the morning after, and once again, we're teased with the storyline of did they or didn't they do it. Except this time, to my surprise, there's no clear no we didn't like there was with Ariel. Then we cut to Zach saying stuff like, My whole perspective on how I thought the week was going to go changed because something really special happened between us in the fantasy suite. Followed by Jesse Palmer coming in to specifically address something Zach has to come clean about. Remember conversation like going into the week yeah. um you know taking sex off the table yeah. it changed and suddenly i was off my couch like oh my god okay it's happening everybody stay calm what's the everybody procedure calm. everyone what's the procedure stay calm with gabby in our overnight um we both agreed and wanted to have sex together. And bitch, I'm gaggedy goop to the goop where goop goop goopity goop goop goop. Okay, they got me good. I can honestly say I did not expect Zach to actually break his no sex week vow, and no offense to her, but I thought Gabby was the least likely one he'd do it with. However, here's the new problem. Zach has pretty much told everyone in Thailand that he's not having sex this week. So as he puts it, how can he go forward with Katie's fantasy suite knowing he has this secret? So he wants to come clean. First stop is Gabby's place to tell her his plan going forward is to tell everyone about the whole like, you know. You're looking at me funny. I didn't realize you were so bothered. Awkward. It is awkward. This is a really uncomfortable situation that you've contrived. Really uncomfortable situation. Now Zach reiterates that he's falling in love with Gabby, and she's someone who, quote, would be awesome to go through life with. You're special and I'm falling in love with you. And I, you're someone that would be awesome to go through life with too. But now he has to go and tell Katie and uh, maybe make her feel special too, leaving Gabby with mixed feelings. I'm feeling a little bit blindsided because everything that's meant to be like private and between us is now like not any longer. So it's now time for Katie's fantasy suite date, and these editors are absolutely diabolical for starting this one off with Katie saying, I am falling in love with him. He's extremely loyal, committed, trusting everything. I have no doubt in my mind that the day is going to go really well. Well, for this date, Zach and Katie are headed out into the swamp where, oh, it's starting to rain and, oh no, please tell me this is not the location where Zach's going to tell her he slept with Gabby. I had been intimate this week. Um, you know, it was a decision between us that made sense to further relationship. Now, of course, Katie does not take this well. They're supposed to be here enjoying this beautiful date together where she gets to feel special, and now she's sitting here listening to Zach talk about having sex with another woman. Something she knew was a possibility, but just rather would not have known. I get that you wanted to tell me, and I know, like, you're saying that because you respect me, but, like, honestly, just, like... Could have went without hearing that. Of course, though, overall, it's way better for Zach to be honest about this. But if he went to visit Gabby to tell her before anyone else, couldn't he have also gone and visited Katie and not have done it smack dab in the middle of their date? Maybe have the conversation the night before so she could sleep on it and decide if she wants to continue? That way, they could have this date to focus on their connection and not the one he made with another woman earlier in the week. He says sorry. Like, why are you, why are you sorry? You're not sorry you did it. Like, what are you sorry for? You're sorry the way I'm feeling? Well, you know I would feel this way. 
You know, I wouldn't be like, hey, give me a high five, pal, like. Okay, I know Katie's saying something really important here, but with the way she's saying sorry, all I could think was. Hello there, my noble, strong fellow Canadian. Well, Katie goes, what am I supposed to say here? Thank you? That's your relationship with the other women. Keep it there. So the big question then becomes, will Katie even show up for the night portion of their date? And when she eventually does, the topic for the night becomes, can they move past this? Well, Zach says that he just needed to be honest with her because for better or for worse, he's someone who can't hold a secret. Like it's literally against my DNA. I used to rat on myself as a kid. My parents were like, well, you were the easiest kid to raise because you did anything wrong in school or anything. You told us by the night. <laughs> Catholic guilt had me. And guilt is going to be the central theme for this episode and the rest of the season. The guilt that he felt with Gabby being the second date and her feeling like a second choice that quite possibly could have led to him being intimate with her and trying to make her feel special, as well as the guilt that he's going to feel from here on out with Katie. Because as they go from this date and into the rose ceremony, where yes, the show did cut out the morning after portion of Zack and Katie's date, Gabby starts to express how Zack Zach trying to make things right for the other women is having the opposite effect with her. It's great to hear he's falling in love with me, but in a way it feels like he's cleared his conscience at the expense of my heart. And when Zach arrives and starts monologuing about breaking his intimacy vow, leaving Ariel standing there like, What the hell happened here? Zack makes it a point to hand out his first rose to Katie, which leaves Ariel and Gabby where it shouldn't surprise you how things go. Gabby? Gabby, will you accept this rose? Now as Zack pulls Ariel aside, who is just very strong throughout this whole thing, I gotta think he told her about his night with Gabby at some point before this and they just cut it from the show. But as Ariel is sent off to be one of the hottest commodities in the upcoming season of Bachelor in Paradise, Katie is back with Gabby telling her she knows she was the only one. I know you are the only one. I feel like I'm wearing like an ant on my chest. Oh my god. So for those of you wondering, looks like nothing happened with Zack and Katie the night of their fantasy suite. However, Gabby is feeling like she's wearing the scarlet letter and worse yet, that guilt of Zack's is causing him to focus on Katie, leaving Gabby once again feeling like the second choice. It's like a very uncomfortable feeling and he's like only making eye contact with Katie when I feel like I've just been kind of put through the ringer here. But this is it. Two women, one scandal, plus a lot of questions before the finale. And I, for one, am way more invested than I thought I'd be. So that's it for this recap of week 9 of The Bachelor and Fantasy Suites. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more, as there's still a lot of content on the way. And until next time, Bachelor Fan Take out. And bitch, I'm gaggedy goop to the goop where goop goop goopity goop goop goop. I'm about to call Gene Cochran. I got whiplash from this whirlwind.